These ratchets are godsend. You just, just put them in there and you just flippy flattle away. Just, just, and you know, just like you're, you're a 13 year old kid again. You just go at it. Get yourself one of these when you're messing with these T-clamps. Guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the Intake Manifold Makeover Project. Intake Manifold Makeover. Hey, <laughs> That was a kind of a M mouthful, wasn't it? Today, we're going to tackle the intakes. I organized, sorted out the tuning aspect of it so I could go ahead and get the intakes taken care of. As you know, I have regular cold air intakes, but I'm going to put in three inch intakes. And with three inch intakes, the diameter of the tubing around the mass airflow is a lot larger. And because of this, a lot of air flows around the mass airflow that it doesn't get metered per se to the stock size or the stock variance. What we have to do in order to run a three inch is we need to program the ECU to work with the mass airflow to um, what's that word? To, to take into account, compensate, huh? I don't know. We have to let the computer know that, hey, this volume of air you're, no, you're normally accustomed to getting is actually this X amount of volume of air because it's not going to meter a certain amount of air going around. That's part of the tuning and we couldn't get the three inch intakes installed because the car wouldn't run right. What we're going to do, it wasn't in this series, but in the last video I was talking about going with um, Ray and we're not going to do a live dyno tune, dyno session and tune. What we're going to do, we're going to do an e-tune. We're going to change out the intakes. I'm going to flash a bass tune. When I flash the bass tune, we're going to do certain parameters. I'm going to have to do a separate e-tune video for that. We're going to slowly step it up and slowly get the car programmed and tuned to run those three inch intakes. Today, we're just going to tackle installing this three inch intakes, which normally isn't that bad because for the three inch intakes, it's really easy to do. To remove the strut bar, get rid of those intakes from there, remove this um, air shield or thing, diverter, air diverter, whatever, and then get the grill out. And with that out of the way, I should have enough room to go ahead and do the swap. Hey guys, so this is Kevin from the future. Let's go ahead and say that's not entirely correct. With this three inch intakes, why 100% recommend taking the bumper off. You will see further along in the video. But the thing is, that's just half the picture. I'm doing this for you guys, for your benefit, okay? I know exactly what's going on behind the bumper and I know what I need to do behind the bumper, but you may not. As much of a pain in the backside is gonna be, I'm gonna take off the front bumper so we can get those intakes installed so you guys can see a proper comparison between the two. So I just need to shut up and I need to get to it. Okay guys, so you can see, we got the bumper off, the front of the car taken apart. And we just got to dissect the old stuff. What I had is the Takeda cold air intakes. The difference with the regular cold air intakes and the three inch ones is, see the, the diameter here? It's the factory size, so the factory mass airflow would have a hard time picking up the air passing through. I initially, when I first bought the car, I initially bought some Stillen cold air intakes. So you can see with these taquitas, you don't have to cut here, cut and trim. You don't have to because it is soft pipe. But I had the Stillens, so with the Stillens, there's a hard pipe comes through here, which also had to cover these lines because the Stillens rubs against these lines and they bore a hole in it eventually. I had the still in for about two weeks and I hated it. The fitment was so bad. It was touching everywhere. 
These taquitas, they fit so much nicer to the stillin. Brand new stillins, I couldn't do it with it. I got rid of it and I got these taquitas. And you can see here with the taquitas, they have nice little brackets that hold the air intake where it is. It's bolted into the bumper. I had to notch the little fiber a little bit, let it fit a little flusher. You can see like in a previous video when I cleaned it after freaking five years, I know, I know. I did a dual intake mod to it. So I really like the dual intake mod and how it worked out. But we're going with three inch, so we gotta get rid of this. We gotta disconnect the tube in. We gotta take off our shrub bar. We gotta condemn this valve breather because the three inch doesn't have an inlet for the valve, for not the valve, for the um, PCV system. And other here also, we need to plug here also after we take that tube off. So these are like a few months old, these Z1s. I waited for like two, three years to buy them. I finally buy them. I'm now going to take them off the car. Go figure. So let me go ahead. Let me get these intakes off and I'll be right back. Okay, quick comparison. We've got the passenger side out. So here you see the Takata, Takeda, however you want to say it. One thing I really liked is the mountain point to hold the filters nice and flush, but you can already see the diameter difference. This actually had a three inch inlet for a filter, but then went down to stock pipe. And once again, like I said, because of the mass airflow, stock mass airflow size, and you can see the size difference right there. So a whole lot more air, a whole lot more volume, and how it angles up. You can see it actually restricts further down here to go with the OEM restrictions. And the admins here, I'm trying to stay out of the light. The admins, they don't really send plates anymore, but I was able to reach out to them and I was able to get a plate and I riveted it on. So here are the admins. Once again, girthy three inch boys. But I have one big problem with the admins. I don't know if I'm nitpicking or if it's a, a, a real problem or something, but I believe there is, I don't know if it's a quality issue because it's just one guy making them and he has hundreds and hundreds of units to pump out. Maybe he needs a, a hand for some finish work in between some cutting and stuff like that because I'll put um, right around here, oh dear, I'll, I'll find out in post. You'll find out. I'll put a little excerpt of how inside the pipes look. And for something that's so expensive, for something that has such a great name to it, like I said, it may not be the, the, the guy's fault. It may just be, be a, a problem of popularity, demand over supply, okay? I know I said that backward, but it, it's the demand. So people want them and the guy that's making them can't keep up. But the joints, there's no deburring of the aluminum. You can see in the little clip I put up there, there's a bunch of aluminum burrs just hanging out inside the pipe. And then some of the pipe, is not even lined up or contoured. It's contoured and lined up to the outside. And of course, the inside, because of how the diameter and, and the sleeving and the radius works, yeah, they're gonna have overlaps, but you could probably bend it a little bit. That, that's a little radius. You could probably flare a little bit for a smoother transition. And, the, and like I said, I might be nitpicking, but the reason I'm nitpicking is the next stage of this project. The next stage of this project is ported manifolds. And the whole premise behind ported manifolds is smoothness, there's no bumps, there's no transitions, everything is port matched, there's no little raises or anything because we're accelerating the air. We're forced, not forcing the air, sorry. We're making it as slick as possible, right? To create such a suction that we're trying to maximize, maximize the amount of air we could get in this naturally aspirated application. So when we put something like this intake, yes, it's more volume, it's a whole lot more volume, but these little burrs and these little bad transitions that I showed you, is it going to create a negative effect? Is it going to create enough turbulence 
that it may negatively affect the performance of the ported intakes, sorry, the ported manifolds. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Yes, it's gonna be turbulent in the intakes, and by the throttle body side, it should start smoothing out. From the throttle body to the intake manifold to the lower intake manifold to the cylinders, that's not long of a run to build up the velocity and, and smoothness. I know this have come up recently, and I think uh, the guy, I'm not calling him the end, but the guy that's been doing it, we all know who makes him, and he's a cool guy, really awesome dude. I've seen a lot of changes in his production, and it's really cool, and I look forward to more changes. I just hope it doesn't negatively affect me. I have, I am working on a different solution. Yes, a different solution. And we will see if it makes any difference. A mandrel bent intake. Hit a like, put a comment that you wanna see this sooner than later. Let me know that you wanna see a mandrel bent intake, three inch intake solution versus this welded solution, okay? Let me go ahead and get this in the car so we could compare in the car the taquitas and the three inches. That's not gonna fit. Well, blow me down. Well, dang it, guys. These intakes don't come with any vacuum caps. You would think it would come with vacuum caps because these intakes have no draw in. So you would think it'd come with vacuum caps, but it didn't. I bought that kit there thinking I would use it or have it extra. It has sizes for these ports, but it doesn't have the big size for that port. Of course, this is going to be a, a hose for the. Um, intake so we don't need a cap there ECS tuning kit I bought I was originally going to return that but I may have to use the vacuum caps from it look see these large vacuum caps it's got to use it for here since I didn't get one with the admin so when you order an admin kit tell them guys give me vacuum caps okay you're paying so much money tell them you want vacuum caps it's like freaking couple of cents just tell them to throw some vacuum caps inside the kit. So now, since I'm gonna use the ECS tuning kit, how about, how about I just do a giveaway? Would you guys like that as a giveaway? Off the old kit. The only thing you'll need to get is source a uh, big enough caps for that manifold. Or you could probably leave the one on your intakes. It's up to you. But let me see the comments. Load up those comments. Some nice updates. Took care of the interference problem over here. It's barely touching. It will rub a little bit, but it's barely touching. Not like how it was before. I slacken this, put some pressure on it here while tightening up the um, T clamp, and that's held it in place. So that's nice. The driver's side went in nice. Did the vacuum line delete again. This is a little close. I'm probably gonna just bend this bracket up a little more. You see how it comes up and then down? Or just, just squeeze that, push that back in to just get that from touching. But front here, look at this. This fit much nicer than this side. Because of that, I'm gonna take off this side. See how far in this went? Um, let's see. 
about there. So see, see if I push in the silicone tube and probably that's what a centimeter? No, about centimeter half, two centimeters. Sorry, I'm a metric person. We could get that in more and get this to fit a whole lot better. Another thing to note, like I said, would have distillants of distilling intake rubbing against these AC lines. So they had to get wrapped. And I wrapped them, as you see here, fuel line and zip ties. And because of this intake is the actual T clamp is sitting on the wrap. So if you're doing this and you don't have anything protecting the AC lines, put something between the, the C clamp and AC line. Between the um, silicone boot and the AC line rubbing, that's fine. But any metal or metal, you don't, you don't want that, okay? So make sure that if you have the clamp close to the AC line, protect your AC line. They are in. They are in, they're finally in, everything's good, everything's buttoned up. Test fitted, the strut bar, clearance and stuff like that. This side's a little high. Couple installed notes. When you install in and you tighten up these clamps, holy moly, these ratchets are a godsend. You just, just put them in there and you just flippy flattle away. Just, just like, you know, just like you're, you're a 13 year old kid again. You just go at it. Get yourself one of these when you're messing with these T-clamps. I got this side lined up nicely. So the both sides are lined up nicely. Clearance overall, this actually for a thicker intake, THICC, it still fits much better than the damn Stillens. Granted, the Stillens are the first intakes to hit the, this platform and they never really updated it. I don't know why. They should have had some V2s, but it never did. These actually fit really well. Nothing's interfering, everything's good there. I may slacken that one more time, rotate this up a little bit, then lock it in. So it kind of holds it up, see how this side's held up. Let's do that again. And then I'll throw the bumper on. Another tip, because when you're gonna service these intakes, you're not going to take the whole bumper off to get them. You're gonna take this shield off. So when you do your clamps, orient, the head of the nut, the head of the bolt, in this direction. So when you take the shield off, you can get to it, undo it, pop it off, and pull it out, like, you, like I did in the last video. But overall, it really was an easy installation. The only big pain in the butt part is taking the bumper off. And I spoke too soon. So remember when I said everything's fitting well and everything's looking good? We're having some huge bumper clearance. I went and looked at admin's old video there's like a piece of plastic right here. I had to cut that out, this little square here, just to add some clearance on both sides. And then look how far up this coupler is. That's the end of the pipe right there. That's the end of the pipe. And then here's the end of the coupler right here. That's huge. I'm gonna have to trim this. If I trim this, I could tuck this intake in a whole lot more. Get this intake in a whole lot more. See how far out it is? If I get this intake in a whole lot more, I should be able to clear that bumper. Having huge clearance issues is not touching. Going to end up ev eventually cutting this. Not eventually, I'm going to cut it. It's, it's so far up here, it's going to be a pain in the butt to get out. I'm going to have to take off the whole thing and just pull it out. We'll see. Update. I did have to take the whole thing out to get this out. This was severely stuck. Remember before, it was all the way up here, right? All the way up here. Now, if we look, end of the pipe is here, all the way up here is that much tubing, that much um, silicone. Hey guys, how's he doing? This is Kevin again from the future. Admin specified to push the tube as much as you can up the piping at this point to lock it in and give it strength. Sometimes you want flex in some of these lines for when the engine moves, the body flex and stuff like that. Another problem I saw, which I didn't get on camera, is by pushing the silicone tube so far up the intake pipe the bottom part actually lifts away from the intake and creates a I think like a quarter inch height raised height that's going to create turbulence in the piping tube 
down here is really where you want it to be but I push it all the way up here to try and make it fit look how far that's coming out okay in relation to this here end of the pipe is right around here it's right around here so that's that much coming out so this actually pushes in a whole lot more than the other side okay guys so the best easiest way to cut the silicone you see here it was cut already I guess it comes longer from them put your clamp on there's a straight edge of the clamp and then there is a piece of plastic from the bumper then there's the little um, bolster side for the tie down part get a brand new blade don't even chance to get a brand new blade tighten the clamp down and watch your freaking fingers send it through and use the clamp as your guide Make sure you rub up against the clamp. All right, so now we reach the end there. See it then rub up against the clamp here. So let's shave that a little bit. Okay. See if we could just rotate this without. Nope, I got to slacken it. All right. Let's make sure we have our edge good down the edge there bring up the edge here so this is an end so if we clamp too much it's going to collapse the end so let's just hold it right there because it's just a little piece to go but we have the clamp back on the end and there we go Look at this nice clean edge. Now the tape was just there from when I measured it on the car. Look at that, look at a nice clean edge. Yeah, it's a little jagged from when we moved the clamp, but I've seen some people hacksaw the hell out of this. So that's one down. Let me go get the other one. This is the passenger side. There we go. So we did an inch and a half from the driver's side, and we did two and a half inches on the passenger side. I need to get some lights. I'll be back. Check that out. So much better. So much better. Two and a half inches off of this coupler, because this side is longer. An inch and a half off this coupler so much better there's no lag there's no droop right I already test fitted the bumper it fits in it tucks in so much more no interference here everything is still good there no interference here with the wire everything's still good on this side everything is great these things needed to be chopped severely it's late it's dark as cold. I'm just probably going to finish everything off. Right, guys? I do appreciate you guys coming and hanging with me so far. Thank you all for following. Thank you all for hanging with me. Thank you all for coming this far with it. I'm going to button up everything, finish up everything. This is the admin intake. Stay tuned for the next installment, which is the E-Tune. I got a flash of bass tune to recognize the extra space around the mass. We gotta do some certain runs and stuff like that. So we're gonna go through that in the next video, the process of getting this tuned, getting the antics tuned. You guys have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, so you can keep following this playlist and what's going on. Y'all have a great one, bye.